Oh, the other one. Ms. Rauer, come on up. Just relax. Everything's fine. Come on up. I just want to speak to you real quickly. Yeah, he'll take your purse for you. Um, I just wanted to say hello, first off. Uh, I know you're going to be the next witness. Um, the state has indicated to me, you know, that this is rather emotional for you, which I completely understand. I understand your situation. Uh, so I just wanted you to be able to come in and first and, and kind of see what everything looks like here at this point in time and get a little bit acclimated to it uh, and tell you how this is going to work so maybe you'll feel a little bit more at ease and comfortable, okay? So uh, in a few minutes, you'll, your name will be announced by the uh, state attorney and you'll come in just like you did. You'll come up and you'll be a little bit closer up and I'm going to ask you to raise your right hand and the clerk will administer the oath to you, Okay. And then from there, I'll direct you to come around this way, and you'll come over here, and this is where the witness sits, and you'll have a witness, uh, you'll just sit in the witness chair. There is a cup of water there for you already. There is a box of Kleenex there for you already, okay? Well, I try and think of these things. Uh, not really, the bailiffs do. Um, anyway, so you'll come around there and sit. I'll tell you, just like I have with everybody else, scoot in there, adjust the microphone whatever way you'd like, and speak directly into it, and speak as loudly as you can, please, so that everybody can hear, all right? Uh, and you'll get a feel for it once you say your name or whatever, and you'll, you'll hear the sound of it. Um, and during the course of things, if you need to take a moment, not a problem, just relax, just sit back, you know, um, take a sip of water, take a second to relax, whatever you need, and we'll just smoothly sail right through this. All right? You think you're going to be okay? I think so, too. I think you'll be fine. Just, uh, I know it's very nerve-wracking and probably something that not very many people ever have to do. So just try and relax, and you can go right back out and sit for a minute or two, and then we'll be back with you in probably about five minutes is my guess. Okay? Yes, ma'am. All right. All right, well, we'll kind of be at ease now for about five minutes. Everybody can just stay right where they are. I guess I get it's a little longer break than seven minutes for them, isn't it? But are they ready? Oh, I thought somebody might go for a cigarette. Okay. I think that uh, the jurors are ready, so I think she's ready, so maybe we ought to just go ahead. Sure. And who's calling this witness? Miss Wilson? Wilson? All right. Mr. Stroller, then are you ready to go? All right, then. Let's bring the jurors in. Okay, who was timing me? Was that seven minutes? <laughs> was it pretty close? A little less? <laughs> I thought it was a little less too, but I wasn't really watching my watch. Thank you, folks, and have a seat. Uh, we're ready for, uh, just so you know, we've got two more witnesses for today. And so um, we'll be finished, I believe, before 5 o'clock. So, uh, Ms. Wolfson, state's next witness, please. Rhonda Rauer, please. All right, Ms. Rauer, good afternoon. If you'll come right up here to the front for me, please, ma'am. And if you'll raise your right hand, please, the clerk's going to administer the oath to you. Right hand. There you go. Just relax. It's okay. Relax. Yes. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank All right, man. If you come right around this way, be careful. There's a little bit of a ramp there. The bailiffs will show you, so just watch your step. There you go. And just take your time and get comfortable. Okay. 
And then adjust that microphone however you need it, okay? Okay. All right, and then just speak loudly and clearly when the questions are asked. Okay. All right, very good. Ms. Wolfson, go right ahead. Good afternoon, ma'am. Could you please state your name and spell it for the record? Uh, Rhonda Lynn Rauer, uh, R-O-U-E-R. Okay, and Ms. Rauer, where do you currently live? Brevard County. How long have you lived down in Brevard County for? Uh, about six or seven years. Are you currently employed? Yes, I am. And what type of work do you do? I work for a health care facility. Ms. Rauer, do you know someone by the name of Michael Dunn? Y yes, I do. How long have you known Mr. Dunn for? About four years. Ms. Rauer, what is your relationship to Mr. Dunn? He's my fiance. When did you first start dating Mr. Dunn? I don't remember the exact date, but um, I think it was in um, 08. Now, Ms. Rauer, do you see Michael Dunn here in court today? Yes. Could you please describe where he is sitting and something he is wearing? Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Strollo. Uh, I don't think there's any question. She knows who he is and where he's seated. Yes, Your Honor. Is that right, Ms. Rauer? He's over here in the, in the maroon sweater. Is that correct? Okay. Yes. That's, that's sufficient. Now, Ms. Rauer, during your relationship with the defendant, did you all ever live together? Yes, we did. And um, where was it that you lived together back in November of 2012? Uh, in, in Satellite Beach. And was that at 257 Oceans Residence Court? <laughs> yes. Now, Ms. Rauer, I'd like to turn your attention to November 22nd of 2012. Was that Thanksgiving of 2012? Yes. And do you remember that day? I do. And back then, were you living with the defendant at that address in Satellite Beach? Yes, I was. Did you all spend Thanksgiving night in Satellite Beach? No. And could you tell the jury uh, where you all spent Thanksgiving night? In Jacksonville. Now, why were you all up in Jacksonville that night? Um, because we were going to go to his son's wedding the next day. And that would have been then Friday, November 23rd? That's correct. Now, Ms. Rauer, had you ever met the defendant's son before? No, I had not. And what was the defendant's son name who was getting married? Uh, Christopher. Christopher, okay. Now, um, why did you and the defendant come up to Jacksonville on Thursday night for the Friday wedding? Um, because we have a puppy named Charlie, and um, we knew that we, because you usually can't check into hotels until like three or four, and with the wedding being at four, we didn't think we'd have time to get settled and, and then get to the wedding on time. Okay, so you came up on that Thursday night then to just get settled? That's correct. What did you and the defendant do then Friday morning when you woke up? Um, Friday we got up and went to breakfast. Do you remember where you all went to breakfast? Um, Mimi's Cafe. And do you remember uh, where Mimi's Cafe was? Mm -hmm. It wasn't too far from our hotel, but it was in a, a, around a shopping center, I believe. Okay, was it around an outdoor mall? Yes. And now, and you were staying at the Sheridan, is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Now, Ms. Rauer, had you been to Jacksonville before? Uh, a couple times, about two times. Um, and who had you been to Jacksonville with? Michael. Okay. And why had you come to Jacksonville in the past? Um, his uh, daughter lives, lived up here. Uh, we came to visit one time, and then when she came, uh, when she graduated uh, from the college here. Now, to your knowledge, has the defendant ever lived in Jacksonville? Yes, he did. Okay, and do you know for about how long he lived in Jacksonville? No, I don't. Do you know approximately when it was that he lived in Jacksonville? No, I don't. Now, after having breakfast at Mimi's on Friday, did you and the defendant just go back to the hotel? Yes. And at that point in time, when you went back to the hotel, did you all start getting ready for the wedding? No, we just kind of laid around watch watching TV. Okay. And what time was it approximately that you all started getting ready for the wedding? Probably about 2.30. Now, did you have any sort of alcoholic beverage to drink as you were getting ready? I did. I had a glass of white wine. And do you know whether or not the defendant did? No, Michael did not. Um, Ms. Rauer, what time was it that you left the hotel to get to the wedding? Um, um, probably uh, between 3 and about quarter after. So between 3 and 3.15? Yes. And Ms. Rauer, where was the wedding that you all were going to? In Orange Park. How did you and the defendant get to the wedding? Michael drove. 
And what kind of car was he driving? He drives a black jet. Ms. Rauer, I'm showing you State's Exhibit 125. It should be on the screen next to you. Do you see that photograph? Yes. And is that a photograph then of the defendant's car? Yes. And was that then the same car he was driving that day? Yes. Now, Ms. Rauer, when you got to the wedding, um, how many people were there? I don't know exactly, but it was a small wedding. I th th think it was under 50. OK. And what time was the reception? Well, I don't know how long the wedding lasted. OK. Well, well let me put it this way. Was it directly after the reception, or, was, or excuse me, after the wedding, or was there some time in between the two? No, it, it was directly after the wedding. OK. And was it at the same location? Yes, it was. Ms. Rauer, during the reception, were they serving alcohol there? Yes, they were. And did you have anything to drink during the reception? Yes, I did. Could you tell the jury what it was that you had to drink? I had a glass of red wine, and then I had about uh, two to three rum and cokes. And who was making those drinks then for you? The bartender. And approximately how big was the glass, do you know, for the rum, for the they, rum and cokes? They were about this size. OK. Now, while at the reception, do you know whether or not the defendant had anything to drink? Yes, he did. And what did he have to drink? He had uh, rum and coke as well. Do you know how many drinks he had? He maybe had three or four. Now, at the reception, were there also any sort of toasts that were going on? Yes, there was a toast. And was it a champagne toast? It was. Did you have a glass of champagne then with the toast? Yes, I did. Did the defendant have a glass of champagne with the toast? I'm... If he took a sip, I didn't see it, but he doesn't like regular champagne, okay. just so normally he wouldn't drink it. Ms. Rauer, how long were you and the defendant at the wedding for? We left about um, right around 7, maybe a little after. Was the reception over at this time? No. And why was it that you were leaving the wedding or the reception early? Um, because we wanted to get back to Charlie. He w he's not used to being left alone that long. And how old was he at the time? Um, he was about seven months old. Now, when you left the wedding, did the defendant then drive you um, and himself back in that black Jetta? Yes. Were you concerned at all with how much the defendant had had to drink? No. Once you left the wedding, where did you all go? <sighs> to the gate gas station. Now, Ms. Rauer, did the defendant need to use directions to get to the gate gas station? No. To your knowledge, had he been there before? Yes. Ms. Rauer, I'm showing you now State's Exhibit 2. It should be on the screen in front of you. Uh -huh. And do you recognize that to be an overview, an aerial shot of the gate gas station? Yes. And in looking at State's Exhibit 2, can you tell the jury which entrance you used when you got to the gate gas station? Do you remember? I do remember. I just don't know how to tell you. You can actually touch the screen and make a mark on there. Oh, okay. So I, I think we went in this entrance. Okay, so you would have turned in that entrance. And for the record, it's um, the turn off of Southside Boulevard that's showing on the screen. And if you put pressure on there, you can actually draw a little line if you move your finger with it. And look, there you go. Good. <laughs> now, Ms. Rauer, when you pulled into that entrance, or when the defendant did, did he then park the car? Yes. What was the reason for stopping at the gas station? To get a bottle of wine. And whose idea was it, Ms. Rauer? Mine. Now, Ms. Rauer, I'm showing you State's Exhibit 5. Is that then just the front doors of the gas station you stopped at? Yes. And Ms. Rauer, this is now State's Exhibit 7. Um, where, can you show on this screen where the defendant parked his car? Right there. So in that first spot? Yes. Ms. Rauer, when the defendant parked in that spot, do you remember whether or not there was any car directly to the left of him? Yes, there was. And do you remember what color that car looked? R or red. Looked? OK, it was a red car. Now, how close was the defendant's car to that red car, Ms. Rauer? Um, pretty close. Would the defendant have been able to get out of the car? Um, I don't think so, because his car, his doors swing wide, because it's, it's a two-door. Okay. Is it a two-door? No, it's not, but I they still just swing wide. Okay. 
Now, Ms. Rauer, when you all pulled into that parking spot, was your window up or down? My window was up. And do you remember what the defendant's window was like on the driver's side? It was up. And do you know whether or not the back windows were up or down? They were up. When the defendant pulled into that parking space, could you hear any music coming yeah. from the red SUV? Yes. And you could tell it was coming from that car? Yes. From where you were sitting inside of the car, could you hear any of the lyrics of the music? No, I couldn't make out the lyrics. Could you tell, though, what kind of music it was? Yes, I could. And uh, could you hear the bass? Yes. Now, from inside the car, was, any, was anything in the car rattling from the bass? No. Did the defendant say anything about the music when he parked the car next to the red car? Yes. And what did the defendant say? Oh, I hate that thug music. And what was your response to the defendant? I said, yes, I know. What happened, Ms. Rauer, after the defendant parked the car? What did you do? Um, I gave him a kiss. I took $20, and I went into the store. Now, prior to pulling into that parking spot, had it already been discussed who was going to be going into the store? No. Ms. Rauer, when you got out of the car, were the windows in the black Jetta, were they still up? Yes. And did you close then your door behind you when you got out? Yes, I did. Now, when you got out of the Jetta, could you tell whether or not the windows on the red SUV were up or down? No, I paid no attention to the vehicle. Could you tell whether or not a door was open on the red SUV? I, I paid no attention to the vehicle. As we were walking into the store, could you hear the lyrics to the music that was playing? I could hear words being said, but I couldn't make out the words. Okay. And while walking into the store, Ms. Rauer, did you hear any sort of arguing going on behind you? No. Ms. Rauer, where did you go once you got into the store? I went over to the aisle that they have wine. Ms. Rauer, I'm now showing you States, States Exhibit 41. Do you recognize States Exhibit 41? I do. And what do you recognize those two items to be? The items that I picked up. OK. Once you picked up then the wine, the bag of chips, where did you go? I was walking to the cash register. Now, as you were inside the store, could you hear the music that was coming from the red SUV? No. And while you were in the store, could you hear any sort of arguing going on? No. As you were walking to the register, did you hear anything unusual? Yes. What did you hear? I heard pop, pop, pop. And when you heard those noises, did you know what they were? No, I didn't. Did you know where they were coming from? No, I didn't. Where were you when you first heard pop, I, pop, pop? I was walking, t the, the register kind of goes like, you have a long, and then the cash, cash register is right here. So I was kind of walking up the aisle, and the clerk was standing there. Were you at all paying attention to what was going on outside? No, I wasn't. What did you do when you first heard those gunshots? I said, what was that? And were you speaking into the cashier in front of you? Yes, I was. What did you hear next? When I, I heard another pop, pop, pop. And what did you do after you heard the second set of pop, pop, pop? Well, I didn't do anything the cashier said. The guy, there was a guy and he has a gun. And I turned around to see who she was talking about. Ms. Rauer, when you turned around, what did you see? I saw Michael looking out his driver's door. And in what position was the driver's door? And the door was open. And could you see a body profile, the profile of the defendant at that time? Yes, I could. Could you describe for the jury what position he was in? It was like he was facing out the door. Could you see what he was doing with his hands? No, I, could, I didn't see his hands. Could you see whether or not he was crouched down at all? No, I did not. Was he facing in the direction? Actually, strike that. When you looked out, did you see the red SUV at all? No, I did not.
Were you able to see a gun at all from your view at that point in time? No, I was not. What did you do after seeing the defendant in this position? I started walking towards the door. And that's the front door? The front door, yes. What did you do with the chips and the wine? I left them on the counter. What did you do as you got to the front door? I, I opened the door. Did you go outside? No. Did you pause at the front door? Yes, I did. And then what happened? Michael said, get in the car. Did you go get in the car at that point in time? No, I, I, I must have hesitated or I, I, I might have said something, but I don't recall, but I just didn't, didn't move. And then what happened? And he just said more urgently, get in the car. Did you then go and get in the car? And did you get back into the passenger side of the car? Yes, I did. And Ms. Rauer, as you got back in the passenger side of the car, did you see a firearm at that point in time? Yes, Michael was putting it into the glove box. Ms. Rauer, I'm showing you State's Exhibit 113. Do you recognize that? I do. What do you recognize 113 to be? That's Michael's gun. Was that a gun that you had seen prior to this night? Yes, he always kept it in the glove box. Okay. Do you remember, Ms. Rauer, when you saw it at that point in time, whether or not it was back in its holster? No, I don't recall. Once you got into the passenger side of the car, what did the defendant do? He, he started to back up. Did he wait for you to put your seatbelt on? I don't recall. I, I'm, I'm certain no. Okay. And Ms. Rauer, I'm showing you State's Exhibit 2 again. Do you remember which exit, how it was that the defendant exited the gate gas station? I think we went through this strip mall. Okay, and went out the exit farther on down? I guess. Ms. Rauer, how was he driving? Quickly. Where did you go once you got back in the car? Oh, bless you. Um, we uh, went back to the hotel. What was the defendant's demeanor like in the car on the way back to the hotel? He was anxious. Did you notice any injuries to him? No. While driving back to the hotel, did you ever suggest that you all should call 911? No. Do you own a cell phone? Yes, I do. Did you have it on you? Yes, I did. Do you know whether or not the defendant owns a cell phone? Yes, he does. And do you know whether or not he had one on him? Yes, he did. Now, Ms. Rauer, had you seen a police car in the area prior to the shooting? Yes, I did. Where had you seen that police car? It was across the street, like around in this area. It, he, um, the lights were on, so I, I which just kind of assumed he had pulled somebody over or something. When you left the gate station, did you still see that police car? Yes, I did. Do you remember, Ms. Rauer, how long it took you to get back to the hotel? <sighs> no. When you got back to the hotel, where did the defendant park the car? In front. And once you got to the hotel, did you and the defendant get out? Yes, I got out before he did. And where did you go? Straight into the hotel. And was the defendant then following you? Yes, he was. Did you ever see the defendant open that glove box again and take out his firearm? No, I did not. Once you got inside the hotel, Ms. Rauer, what did you do? I changed my clothes. So you went up to your room? Yes, I did. What did the defendant do? He took Charlie outside to go potty. Did you go with him? No. Do you remember how long he was gone for? No. What did you do after you changed your clothes? I went to sit by the elevators. Was there a little sitting room there? There's a little lounge area right by the elevators. And why did you go out to that sitting area? Because I figured that the police would be there soon. Were you just sitting there waiting for them? Yes, I was. When the defendant came back up from walking Charlie, were you still there? Yes, I was. 
After he came back up, though, did the two of you go into your hotel room? We, we sat there by the elevators for a bit. Okay, and at some point then you went back into the hotel room? Yes, we did. Now, at some point, did you all also order a pizza? Yes, but because my stomach was and so Michael thought maybe I just needed to eat something. Okay. Now, how did you go about ordering that pizza? Did you place the order? Uh, I got the information from the front desk, and Michael called. OK. And was it a delivery pizza? Yes, it was. Once the pizza came, then, did the defendant have to go downstairs and get the pizza? Y yes, he did. When he came back with it, did the two of you try to eat some pizza? Yes, I, had, I did. I had, some, I had a couple bites. Now, while you were trying to eat, where were you? In the hotel room. Were you sitting on the bed? I'm sitting on the bed, staring out the window. Was your back to the defendant? Yes. Did you have anything to drink in the hotel room? Yes, I did. What did you have to drink? I had a rum and coke. And did the defendant have anything to drink? Yes, he did. What did he have? The same. Who made those drinks? He did. Were they stronger than the ones you had at the wedding? Yes. After having that drink, Ms. Rauer, did you then try to fall asleep? Yes, I did. And were you able to fall asleep? Yes, I was. Do you know whether or not the defendant fell asleep? I don't know. What time, Ms. Rauer, did you wake up the following morning? About 7 o'clock. Where was the defendant when you woke up? In the bathroom. When you woke up, was the television on? Yes, it was. And did you happen to see something on the news? Yes, I did. At that point in time, did you learn that a teenager had been killed at the gate gas station? <gasps> yes, I did. <sighs> did you then tell the defendant that you wanted to go home? <sighs> yes, I did. And why did you decide that you all needed to go home? <laughs> I thought I was going to be arrested, too, and wanted to get Charlie taken care of. Ms. Rauer, did you and the defendant actually have other plans for that Saturday night? Yes. And what were those plans supposed to have been? We were supposed to go to St. Augustine. And did you all go to St. Augustine? No, we did not. Did you call to cancel that reservation? No, we did not. What time, Ms. Rauer, do you remember leaving? The hotel? Um, uh, probably by 8. 8 a.m.? Did you and the defendant have breakfast first? No. Did you have coffee or anything like that? No. Who was driving on the way back home? Michael. And how long approximately did it take you all to get home? About two and a half hours. Did you make any stops on the way home? No, we did not. Did either of you ever call 911 on the way home? No, we didn't. Around what time did you arrive at your house in Satellite Beach? I, had to, I believe it was around 10, maybe 10.30. And Ms. Rauer, I'm showing you State's Exhibit 98. Is that then a photograph of the outside of your house? Yes, it is. Of where you and the defendant were living at that time? That's correct. When you got back to your house in Satellite Beach, did the defendant park the car? Yes, he did. And where did he park the car? Uh, just outside the uh, garage. What did you all do once he parked the car? I took Charlie out back to go potty, and he got the crate and the um, luggage out of the car. Now, Ms. Rauer, while you were at your house, did you receive a call with a 904 area code on it? Yes, I and did. Was, and was that on your cell phone? It was on my cell phone, yes. What did you do once you got that phone call? I, I didn't answer it. I handed the phone to Michael because it was a 904 area code, and um, we thought maybe it was his son because we were supposed to meet him for lunch in St. Augustine that next day. Okay, and did you later learn that was actually a member, a homicide detective from the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office calling? Yes. Where did the defendant go once he got off the phone with that detective? He, he went to our neighbor's house. Did you eventually go over to your neighbor's house as well? Yes, I did. 
And is that house, how many units away from your house is it approximately? I think there are three or four down. Ms. Rower, did members of the Brevard County Sheriff's Office eventually arrive at your house? Yes. And did the defendant, excuse me, did the defendant eventually go outside when they asked him to? Yes. Did you actually speak with members of the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office that day? Yes, they, they questioned me that evening. Now, Ms. Rower, prior to um, this trial starting, were you advised not to speak with any other witnesses in this case? Yes. And since the start of the trial, um, did you actually watch a part of the trial yesterday on TV? I did. And then during that, did you get a phone call that you weren't supposed to be watching? I did. And I immediately turned it off. And did what you saw yesterday, did that in any way change your testimony today? No, not at all. Your Honor, at this time, I would ask permission to publish State's Exhibit 168, which is the Gate Gas Station Surveillance video. All right. you in the black and white? Yes, it was. I have no further questions. <laughs> Mr. Strolla? Thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. Hockney, you there? Yeah, can I have just one? Thank you. You okay? I'm okay. First time you watched that video? Um, I saw it one other time. Okay. And was that on the news? No, Miss Wolfson played it for me. And it still upsets you greatly. Yes, very much so. Okay. What the jury sees here today, is that a fair representation of how you were that night after this happened? Yes. You were that upset? I was very upset, but in kind of shock. And this is well over a year ago? Oh, yes. Fresher in your mind then, too, than what it is today? Yes, sir. More real then than it is today? Yes, sir. Now, you said the purpose of there was to go up to Michael's son's wedding, correct? That's correct. All right. And you guys picked the Sheridan because that was a pet-friendly hotel for Charlie? That's right. Okay. And Charlie was still a puppy? Yes, he was seven months old. Was he potty trained? No. Did you have them in a crate in the room? Yes, we did. And matter of fact, you guys left early before they even cut the cake so that you could let Charlie go potty. That's correct. Right. And it was a spur of the moment thing to stop at the gate just to get you some wine and chips? That's correct. And that's because you didn't eat very much? <laughs> that's correct. And the wine is because you didn't like red wine and they didn't have white wine at the wedding? Exactly. Okay. Now this gate gas station is right down the street from the Sheridan where you stayed, right? It, it was not too far away, yes. Okay. Is the Sheridan Hotel hidden behind trees or forests or somewhere back in the woods? I don't think so. All right. Pretty out in the open? Uh-huh. Right off of Main Street? I believe so, yes. Okay. And you said even Michael pulled right up into the front? That's correct. He didn't try to hide his car? No, 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 no. Did he, did he back in to hide the license plate? No. Did he try to hide behind semi-trucks or go behind the hotel? No. Okay. As a matter of fact, you were so scared, you even said before he got out, you jumped out and ran inside. That's correct. And you were afraid and in fear because of what just happened? Yes. Okay. 
Now, obviously, you know Michael owns a gun. Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, you even said to the manager, it's okay, it's Michael, and she told you not to go outside. That's correct. You didn't have any fear of Michael handling a weapon. No, as a matter of fact, and I don't know exactly what I said, but I tried to reassure her that if she was talking about Michael, that he was the one that, was, that had a gun, that she didn't have to worry about it. Right. It's a good guy with a gun. Yes. And he's going to protect you. Exactly. And you thought that's what he was doing. I had no idea. Sustain. Let me ask you this. As upset as you were when you got in, was Michael upset? <sighs> Not as visibly. Okay. Well, obviously he wasn't as shaken up as you are. Right. Okay. And, and you're as shaken up now as you were then. Exactly. Okay. Could you tell that Michael, just by looking at him, yes, right, was was also shaken, yes, and in shock, yes. Had you ever seen in your three and a half years with him him look like that? Never. Had you ever seen his hand shake? No. Had you ever been in any situation like this with him before? Never. Now, when you pulled up. You didn't sit in the car and have a conversation with Michael before you went into the gate gas station, true? It, it, please repeat that. Yeah. When you guys pulled into the gate, it was just for you to go in and get chips and wine. Right. right. Okay. And so you guys, you didn't sit in the car with them for a great length of time. No. All right. So when Miss Wolfson asked you about the, the windows vibrating and the windows shaking, you were only sitting there for a few seconds. Is that, that fair? That's correct. Okay. And when Michael said, I hate that thug music, and you said, yeah, I know. Right. Did he bang the steering wheel? Oh, gosh, no. Did he punch the dashboard? No. Did he say anything like, I'm going to teach these kids a lesson? No. Did he even roll down his window to confront him and say, I'm going to say something to these thugs? No. Right. All he said to you, his fiance, is, hate that thug music. That's correct. And then you said, I know, and you got out of the car. That's correct. Did you ever see him try to get out of that car? No. Did you see him reach over and try to get the gun out of his glove box that's always there? No. Okay. And even today, guns still make you nervous? Yes. Okay. And a matter of fact, you have your son go shooting with him and it still makes you nervous. Sustain. Judge, it. I, just briefly. Sidebar. Yes, Ron.
in this instance. All right, Mr. Stroll, it's sustained, but go ahead. Let me rephrase it. Back then, when this happened, were you any more comfortable with firearms than you are even today? No. Okay. And with that being said, because of what happened, you even said you thought you were going to be arrested. That's correct. You're not knowledgeable in the laws or anything like that? No, sir. And you're not experienced in the handling of firearm? Well, actually, sir, um, I have, um, I've gone to the gun range with Michael and my son in the past, and um, it's, I have fired a handgun before, um, but I didn't really enjoy it. I just did it to hang out with the boys. And that, that was what I was saying. You're not experienced. Yet. No, no, no. Right. You're not qualified. No. Sustained. Now... At the wedding, what was the mood at the wedding? Uh, it was actually great. Everybody was just having such a great time, and Michael really enjoyed meeting up with because his ex-wife yep. and and the the ex-in-laws and all of them were there, and they were just so um, very accommodating and just it was like old friends just coming together. Right. So there were no issues at the wedding, even oh. though his ex-wife was there. Still right. on very friendly terms. Very much so. Wedding went off without a hitch. Yes, it was a beautiful wedding. And the only reason you left early was to take care of Charlie. Yes, sir. Okay. And with that, you said he had a couple of drinks at the wedding. That's correct, sir. Okay. Now, when you said three or four, did mm -hmm. he drink three or four, or did he go to the bar that many times to get drinks? No, I think he drank them. Okay. And these cups are... Were they served in red Solo cups? No, they were about this size. Okay. And again, it was bar service. It wasn't pour your own. That's correct, sir. Okay. And in that respect, and do you and Mr. Dunn have alcoholic beverages when you go out to dinner? Yes. Do you enjoy them on the weekends? Yes, we do. Okay. Based on what Michael Dunn drank that day, uh -huh. based on your knowledge with him, did mm -hmm. he seem impaired in the slightest bit from alcohol? Not at all. And you had no concerns about it getting in the car with him? Absolutely not, sir. You had no concerns about him making judgments? Absolutely not. And if you did, you would have either had somebody drive you home. Exactly. All right. And again, once you went into the store, you never saw Mr. Dunn try to get out? No, sir. And after the gunshots we heard, you actually look outside and you see Mr. Dunn facing sideways. That's correct. Right. He's not running out of the vehicle? No. He's not running down the street chasing anyone? No. And you don't even see a gun? No, sir. Okay. Matter of fact, when you get into the car, he's actually putting the gun away? That's correct. Now, when you go back to the hotel, you run upstairs, right? That's correct. And then you don't even take Charlie out to go potty? No, I didn't. Are you still as shaken up physically and emotionally as you were today? Yes. If not more? Exactly. And isn't it true at the Sheridan, you don't take the dog for a walk out down the street? No, sir. Right, you don't go walk around the grass and there's not an area... 20, 30, 40 feet away from the hotel, is there? No, there, it's um, like around the corner of the, the hotel, but you really can't walk because they, they've got a, a sign that says beware of alligators. And matter of fact, it's a, a cement slab right next to where the elevators are, right around the corner. That's correct, sir. And when the dogs go to the bathroom, politely you clean it up and take the dog back up. Well, most, most people don't, but yes, you're supposed to. Okay, and in that instance, was Michael out there? Objection, separation. Sustained. In your recollection, was he out there for a long time in terms of leaving the room and coming back up? I don't recall how long he was out there, sir. Did it seem like a long time? That night seemed like forever. I can imagine. Now, was Michael Dunn still nervous? Objection, separation. Sustained. 
based on your knowledge, did he appear nervous or anxious? What I know, what I noticed of Michael that night, that he was concerned about me and he was trying to take care of me. Okay. And at one point, he was trying to take care of you so much that you had to step outside to get air. That's correct, sir. And in your three and a half years, you had never seen him like that? No, sir. Now, Ms. Wolfson also said that you ordered a pizza. Yes, I did. Yes, we did, sir. Did Michael say, hey, I'm hungry, let's eat? No. Did Michael say, hey, I'm bored, let's watch a movie? No. Okay. Again, you got the information order of the pizza, and that was because they felt you needed to put something in your stomach. Yes. My, Michael thought maybe I'd feel better if I had something to eat. All right. And it's safe to say you were acting probably where he's never seen you like that. Yes, sir. Did Michael sit down and start eating pizza? I don't recall how much if he ate at all. Okay. Was he sitting there on the bed with his head on the pillow and his feet up? Um, no, sir. Okay. Was this a nice, calm, relaxed environment in the room? No, sir. Was it a nice, calm, relaxed environment sitting in the waiting room waiting for the police to arrive? No, sir. And Again, you believed you were going to jail. At that, at that time, I wasn't concerned about going to jail. Can I elaborate? Well, what were you concerned about sitting there? Because of the shots being fired. Um, because at the time... Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. I was waiting for the court reporter's lawyer, Your Honor. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Mr. Hour, let let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. Even sitting in that room waiting, were you still in a state of shock of what just happened? Yes, I was. Did the police ever arrive? No, they did not. Okay. And you got the information for the pizza, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And then Mr. Dunn didn't have to go outside the hotel to get it. He just had to go downstairs. Is that correct? Sustain. Do you know the procedure of where that pizza was? He was in the lobby, okay. um, but you can't. You have to have a key to use the elevator. You have to have a room key. So Michael had to go down to get it. Okay, and that was based on you getting the information from the front desk. That's correct. Okay. 
and again, you're still crying and visibly that upset in the room, Mr. Dunn didn't make you go down there and get it? No. Okay. Now, you also said that you made a very strong drink. That's correct. And was that to try to calm your nerves? Yes, sir. And again, was that to try to help you get out of a state you've never been in your life? Yes, sir. And is that the same with Mr. Dunn? I would have to assume so. Were you guys having any type of normal conversations while you were in the room together? Were you guys just talking like it was any Friday night? No, sir. Were you guys having any type of normal conversations like it was a Friday night date night while sitting in that lobby? It's slightly different. Without going to any statements, was it a normal evening for the two of you? No, sir. Were you conversing back and forth like everything was OK? No, sir. And then eventually you said you did fall asleep? Yes, I did. And you have no idea if Mr. Dunn was awake or asleep? No, I have no idea. OK. The last time you checked, was Mr. Dunn still awake? Yes. OK. And then you woke up about 7 AM? All right, yes. And matter of fact, you had the TV on. Is that correct? The TV was on, yes. And sir. that's normal for you, for you guys as couples to, to go to sleep with the TV on? Yes, sir. OK. And when you woke up, you actually heard something on the TV about gas station, shooting, and then you see a red Durango, I believe? Yes. OK. And at that point, your first reaction was to say, Michael, I think you said, well, oh my god, like three times real quick? I, I said, Mike, Mike, Mike. OK. And you were trying to get his attention from the bathroom? And that's correct. OK. And you asked him, did you hear that? I, I just said, Mike, Mike, Mike. And I turned around, and he was standing there, and he said, yes. No, ma'am. No? No, ma'am. Me? I, I, Counsel. Yeah, that's okay. Mr. Stroller, come to the side. Now, Ms. Rauer, try not to say anything that Mr. Dunn said. I'm tr I want to try to focus on what happened with you, okay? Okay. And I'm I apologize so if I... I'm sorry. No, nope, no, nope, that's okay. okay. I'll just try to be a little bit more direct with you, okay? Oh, okay. Right. Now, at that point, you say to Michael several times, and you call out to him because you just learned that on TV. That's correct. And again, it's, a, it's extremely upsetting to you, obviously, today. That's correct. And again, then, bless you. Bless and you. then it was much more than it is today. Sustained. And at that point, when you found out about this, you were the one that instructed Mr. Dunn, 
we got to get home. Is that true? That's correct. As a matter of fact, you said it multiple times to him. Is that true? That's correct. And you were very adamant that you wanted to get home. Yes, I was. You wanted to get your things together? Yes, sir. You wanted to get Charlie taken care of? Yes, sir. You weren't trying to flee Jacksonville? No, sir. Okay. And with that, that was a long two and a half hour ride home, wouldn't you agree? Yes, sir. Probably the worst ride of your life? Yes, sir. Okay. In that time, again, long stretches, you two were not even talking. Is that true? I wasn't saying anything. Okay. And without going anything he said, at that point, were you emotionally shut down? Yes, sir. Okay. Been a long couple of hours? Yes, sir. Now, when you get home, does Mr. Dunn say to you, and well, let me rephrase that. When you get home, does Mr. Dunn try to hide the car in the garage and close it, anything like that? Uh, no, sir. Matter of fact, when you got home, your car was already parked outside, true? That, that's correct, sir. And Mr. Dunn normally parks his car inside the garage? Yes. Okay. Even prior to that day, it was just normal for your years together? Yes, sir. Okay. And in fact, you were the one that actually closed the garage, is that correct? That's correct, sir. And that's because Mr. Dunn had already gone over to the neighbor Ken's house? That's correct. And you were going behind him? That's correct. Okay. And at that point, you said you had already handed him the phone? when the Jacksonville uh, Sheriff's Office had called the phone? Yes, he had already received that telephone call prior to going to the neighbor's house. Okay, and you've known Ken for a, a little bit living mm -hmm. next to you? Yes, sir. Okay, and do you know if Ken is a law enforcement Mr. officer? Strola, yes, sir. Not, let's not use first names. I apologize. Uh, I've told you Mr. that repeatedly. Yes, Judge, I apologize. Okay. Is it Mr. Les Calais? Is that how you pronounce it? But I know who you're talking about. Okay. So, Mr. Les Calais, do you guys know him as a law enforcement officer? Yes, sir. Okay. And without going any type of discussions, that's where Mr. Dunn went to? That's correct, sir. Okay. And then when you get there, is Mr. Les Calais still on the phone? Yes, sir. Or is sir. he on his own phone? He's, he's on his cell phone. Okay. And again, without going into any discussions... Mr. Dunn is still there? That's correct. He's drinking a glass of water? That's correct, sir. Is he still visibly shaken up? Yes, sir. Are you still visibly shaken up? Yes, sir. Okay. Your phone goes off again? That's correct. And then you hand it over to Mr. Dunn? That's correct. Okay. And again, not within going into anything Mr. Dunn says, within moments of Mr. Dunn taking the phone, do you see him take his shirt off? Yes, I do. Do you see him walk outside? Yes, I do. Okay. Do you ever go outside to look? No, sir. And at some point, I think you said you actually talked to the detectives from Jacksonville that evening. That evening, yes, sir. And again, without going into anything they said, did they tell you what had happened and what their version of what happened in Jacksonville was? Yes, sir. Okay. And at that point, you actually thought they were going to arrest you? Yes, sir. Okay. But they didn't? No, sir. Okay. And then several days later... They actually met with you again. That's correct. Okay, and that was after you received a subpoena from the state attorney's office? Sustained. Let, let me ask you this, Ms. Rauer. Did you meet with detectives and Ms. Wolfson a few days later? Yes, I did. Did they give or take a sworn video statement? Sustained. Okay. Did you meet with them? Yes, I did. Did you cooperate with their questions? Yes, I did. Do you know if it was videotaped or audio taped? Yes, yes I do. And did you tell them that it was your fault for going home because of what you testified to today? Yes, I did. And were you still scared at that point? Unbelievably so. Judge, I don't have anything further. Ms. Wolfson, may she be excused? All right, Mr. Strola, same. Yeah. All right, thank you, ma'am. You can uh, I'm so sorry. be excused for the day. Thank you. But, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to stand up.
please do. State's next witness. Investigator Meacham. Investigator Meacham, if you'll come forward, please. Ladies and gentlemen, you resume your seats. Come forward and uh, raise your right hand. The clerk will administer the oath to you. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Thank you. All right, ma'am, if you'll come right around this way for me, please, and have a seat. And please remember to speak loudly into the microphone so everybody can hear her, hear you. Okay. Miss um, Corey, go right ahead. Thank you, Ron. My name is Wendy Meacham. And what is your occupation? I work as a forensic investigator with the medical examiner's office. Is that here in Duval County, Florida? Yes, it is. And do you work with Dr. Stacy Yes, uh, I Ms. do. Ms. Corey, you need to turn that microphone on, please. Hello? Or maybe it's dead. No one's ever told me I'm not loud enough in a courtroom, Your Honor. Well, you got to remember, I think yes, everybody in the courtroom is fine. It's the yes, feed sir. to the media that is. Yes, Your yeah. Honor. Is Thank that you. better? Yes, ma'am. Let's start over. Tell these jurors your name. Wendy Meacham. Your occupation. Forensic investigator with the medical examiner's office. In that capacity, do you work with the medical examiners and associate medical examiners such as Dr. Stacy Simons. Yes, I do. And do you all work as a team when you're required to perform autopsies? Yes. And are those autopsies, when you have to perform them, are those parameters determined by Florida state statutes? Yes, they are. How long have you been an investigator with the medical examiner's office? It's been around 13 years. And were you employed there prior to that time? Yes. And what capacity did you serve then? As a part-time worker in the office. And how long did you do that? About six months. Okay. Now, let me ask you, ma'am, uh, were you the first person in the medical examiner's office to learn of the shooting death of Jordan Davis? Yes, I was. How were you notified that Jordan Davis had been shot and killed? And let me ask you, are notes made in the normal course of y'all's business at the medical examiner's office? Yes, they and are. And are those notes incorporated into a full report, and are you a custodian of those reports as well? Yes, I am. And so uh, would it aid you in your testimony today to be able to refer to those reports if you need to? Yes. On what date and time were you notified that Jordan Davis had been shot and killed, or that he was pronounced dead, I should say? I was notified on November 23rd of 2012 at 10.39 p.m. And was there a medical examiner number assigned to the autopsy of Jordan Davis? Yes, there was. Please tell the jurors what that medical examiner number is. The number is 12-1982. And is 12 a reference to the year? Yes, it is. And is 1982 the reference to the uh, autopsy number for that year? Yes, it is. Okay. Was everything that was done with regard to Jordan Davis's autopsy kept or documented under that particular MEO number? Yes, it was. All right, ma'am. And were the clothing and items of personal nature belonging to Jordan Davis packaged from your office and turned over to the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office? Yes. And was a property receipt then given to the Detective Musser, I believe, at the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Yes, it was. Let me ask you and refer to your report if you need to. Was there a keychain with a key that belonged to Jordan Davis that was turned over to the Sheriff's Office? Yes, there was. Was there a change purse? Yes, there was. A dollar and 25 cents in currency? Yes. A bracelet, yellow and black braided or gold and black braided? Yes. Was there a black wristwatch? Yes. And was there a cell phone? Yes. All right, ma'am. And those items were not processed by your office, just packaged and turned over. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Your Honor, at this time, may I approach defense counsel and then the witness? Yes, ma'am.
And Investigator Meacham, let me ask you, and I'll refer specifically to the exhibit numbers. May I approach around here, Your Honor? Yes, State, ma'am. Excuse me. State's Exhibit 178, is that a keychain from the medical examiner's office? Yes, it is. Okay. State's Exhibit 179, $1.25 U.S. currency. Yes. I'm going to come behind you. State's Exhibit 180, is that the gold and black bracelet? Yes. State's Exhibit 181, a pocket knife. Yes. State's Exhibit 182, a change purse. Yes. State's Exhibit 183, a watch. Yes. And State's Exhibit 184, a cell phone. Yes. Now let me show you this packaging, ma'am, and ask you, is this the type of packaging that your office uses? Yes, it is. And does it bear your medical examiner office case number? Yes, it does. And was, were all these items turned over to the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office? Yes, they were. Judge, uh, can I have just a second with Mr. Stroller? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Judge, I'm going to uh, reserve my right if you'll allow me to display a particular item after cross-examination. All right, right, that'll be fine. Thank you. Are you finished in direct? I am. Thank you. Very good. Mr. Strola. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Meacham, how are you today? Good. Now, you're not the custodian of where these items came from. They were given to the medical examiner's office, correct? Yes. All right. Where did they come from? They came in with Mr. Davis. Okay. From the hospital? Yes. Okay. Did you go to the hospital to pick them up? No, I did not. How did they get packaged at the hospital? I do not know. Okay. Do you know if any of the... Um, family of Jordan Davis was at the hospital? Yes. Oh, you, okay. Do you know who was there? I have. The, his father was. Okay. And do you know if there was any contact with this property with anybody else before it came to you? No, I don't know. Right. And you would have no way of knowing that because you weren't present? Yes. Okay. And how was this packaged up and how did you get it? Is that the bag I see in property there, like a brown bag? The bag... With the writing on the front, the evidence bag? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. That's and that was brought from the Shands Hospital. Now, did you go pick it up, or did, they, did it get delivered to your office? The items would have come in with him to our office. Okay. So when he got transported from the hospital to your office, it was in a bag with him? I believe so. But you weren't yes. there to receive it? Then. No, I was not. Oh, okay. So you didn't even know who got it or who received it at your office? Exactly. You're kind of just the custodian of once it got there. Yes. Okay. Nothing further. Thank you. All right. Ms. Corey, you wanted to display one item? Yes, sir, but may she be excused? Yes. Uh, Mr. Strollo, she can be excused? Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, ma'am. You're excused. Appreciate okay. you being here. And ladies and gentlemen, while they're doing that, I believe they want to display one of the items that's in that exhibit to you. Again, uh, they're going to take it out uh, so you can see it. Uh, and then it'll be put back in there so uh, you'll have the exhibit itself as I've told you about all the exhibits but it'll still be behind the little plastic it won't be out like it like it's going to be now as soon as they do that that will be it for the day uh, we'll be finished and uh, while they're doing that let me tell you as soon as we adjourn, don't discuss the case among yourselves. Don't let anybody discuss the case with you. Tomorrow we will be off, as we've talked about. You'll have a chance to uh, rest up a little bit, sleep in, uh, visit with some family members, I hope. Be sure to remember, don't talk about the case with them. Don't let them talk about the case with you. They've signed confidentiality agreements and such, so uh, I'm sure everybody will be on the same page there. And... Uh, you understand my instructions. And by the way, I don't know if I asked this morning or not. We had, we didn't, yeah, I did, I think. We hadn't had any problems? None today? Yes, sir. Very good. All right, you ready, Ms. Corey? I have Mr. Stroll requested this be displayed as a pocket knife, and he asked me to show both sides of it, Judge. And since uh, Ms. Meacham is gone, if you don't mind, I'll read it. It says Smith and Wesson. Maybe both of you can read it. It says cut and bore, so cut Smith and Wesson logo. Judge. I'm sorry? Smith and Wesson logo, and it says cut and C-U-T-T-I-N, bore. Cut and bore. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Last word is horse, like a horse, like you're riding. Okay. And he just asked that it be displayed the other session. Yes, sir. That's it. I'll see you folks at 9 o'clock on Monday morning. We'll resume. Thank you again for your time and attention, ladies and gentlemen. Courts in recess. How many pages did you get today? Huh? <laughs> I got a report. I know.